Before that, here on BBC Radio 4, what a difference a day makes in the Archers. Disney style. Elizabeth. Everything okay? Yeah, fine, thanks. I'm just on my lunch break. Lorna said you've been busy in the orangery this morning. I don't mind. I, I prefer it busy. Well, do call in and say bye before you go tonight, won't you? Yeah, okay. <sighs> Hi, Jude. How are you? Fine. Listen. Mum's been going on again about you coming over to Brookville to talk about our trip. Yeah. I don't blame you for not wanting to do it, what? the way they've been with you. But you know what my parents are like. I mean, it will be worth it, I promise. I just, I just think they'll feel so much better about what we're planning. Right, listen. Then they'll get off your back. So, when do you think you can make it? I'm not coming. Tonight, you mean? No, I mean I won't be coming to Brookfield at all. <laughs> Sorry, Fizz. Why not? Where are you, Jude? Actually, I'm at the airport. What airport? I don't understand. Well, I'm going to the States. My flight leaves in about, oh, half an hour. America? New York, yeah. You never said anything. Well, I was just about to call but you. But how long will you be gone for? I mean... Jude, when will you be back? Look, Fizz, it's been great, fantastic. You're a lovely girl and we've had some laughs, but nothing lasts forever. You're going to America without me. There's a world out there, Fizz. It's just time to move on. You're... you're dumping me. It was fun. Now it's all a bit... Intense. But no, it doesn't have to be. Look, the thing is, a room in an apartment came up. A friend of a friend. I couldn't turn it down. That would have been crazy. I gave up college and everything for you. I know. And that was sweet. But <laughs> I never asked you to. Look, the departure gate's open. I, I've got to go. Jude! Take care, yeah? Bye. <laughs> You're going to have to give me a hand, Neil. I can't manage on my own. I'm coming. Don't know where we can put her overnight, though. What? I said, where are we going to put this blooming you till morning? Best thing is to put her in the shed next to the house, I reckon. Uh, I'll give Master Phil a shave. He's not there. Neither's David, I don't think. Said something about going straight off to pick up his girlfriend. Well, Mrs. Archer's car, ain't there? Oh, well... She has gone, has she? Who, Mrs. Archer? No, the you. Yes, dead as a doornail. Sixty quid or so down the drain. Right. Let's get her out. Take the lamb first out of the way. That's another forty quid up the space. Yeah. Here you go. Put it on the floor for the minute. Right. Here. Hang on a minute. What? It's still alive. The... Helen. What's Rob done now? Nothing. Well, tell me. I I'm leaving, Kirsty. What? After supper. I was just in the middle of packing mine and Henry's bags. You're really gonna leave? It doesn't have to be forever. I just need some space. That's all. I Maybe it's the baby who Hold knows. Hold on. Every time I try to make sense of my thoughts, nothing fits together. If I can explain it that way, you know, Calmly describe how I'm feeling. Wait, you, you're going to tell Rob? Yes. Helen. Well, I have to, Kirsty. I must be sure. Darling, I'm home. Oh. Sorry I'm so late. The orders took ages. Oh, Wait up the back. Oh, Helen, please. How are you? Kirsty, just for five minutes. Okay, okay. Don't let him see you through the window. Thanks, Jim. Bye. Oh, 
Oh, hello. Kenton. Didn't expect to see you. Really? I was just going in to buy a bottle of wine. Well, uh, don't let me stop you. I'm, um, I'm, I'm just on my way around to Shuler's. We're planning this trip to Bath for Mum's 80th. Yes, I know. Oh, yes, of course you do. You and Jamie are still coming. I uh, hardly uh, think that will be appropriate, do you? Uh, uh, well, it's up to you, obviously. So, uh, how are things? How do you think? Well, I was, I was wondering, you know, I mean, I mean, not now, obviously, but if you fancy meeting up for a drink or something. <laughs> you what? About me and Holly. Oh, that. Yes, that. How could you, Nigel? Hang on. Yes. Did you, or did you not, tell Cathy about me and Holly? I never dreamed you'd pass it on to Cathy. No, I got cornered. Cathy came over on Friday. I was going to tell you. She asked if she could have a word, and I, I could see what was coming, but I couldn't very well say no. But Lizzie... No, she was at her wit's end with Jamie. He's been so bolshy with her since Kenton moved out. I know. And she, she just needed some advice about it all. She said you'd already encouraged her to take Kenton back. Oh, did she? Yeah, and she was thinking that she ought to make the first move to repair things, for, for Jamie's sake, if nothing else. And then she started blaming herself. You know, uh, maybe she'd been too hard on him. Maybe he was upset by the breakup. Maybe he was really making an effort and she wasn't giving him a chance. And all the time, I knew he'd been getting hopelessly drunk and shagging this Holly person. So when she asked me point blank, what should she do? I mean, what was I supposed to say? Yeah, difficult. <laughs> it was impossible. I couldn't lie to her face, could I? I suppose not. No, but, I couldn't. But this has put me in a very awkward situation with Kenton. We're both in a very awkward situation, as long as he's living here. He's never going to trust me again, is he? The Archers. Disney style.